we now move on to the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. We have, after 136, the, the, the article of the Constitution, which advocates on record most often resort to, are writ petitions and Article 32. The Article 32 itself is a fundamental right. And uh, the founders of the founding fathers, and especially Dr. Ambedkar, thought that it was the very soul of the Constitution. Uh, it was to the mind of the founding fathers of the Constitution something which was so fundamental that anybody, any citizen of India could approach the Supreme Court directly if and seek any of the, uh, of the writs, if there was a question of a violation of a fundamental right. Uh, so this, uh, the way one of the leading cases out here is the fertilizer Kamgar Union case in 81. And uh, by virtue of Article 32, the, the court can issue directions, orders or writs, including writs in the nature of Phoebus Corpus, Mandamus, Prohibition, co warrant and certiorari. Now, 32 it got quite a big uh, expansion once public interest litigation started in the uh, court in the 1980s in the post-emergency era when the court said that uh, it would widen the scope of uh, uh, public interest litigation. It would uh, wide, uh, reduce the requirements of uh, locus standi and uh, entertain uh, petitions on behalf of the lost, the last and the least, to use uh, Justice Krishna Iyer's words, so that people who could not approach the court themselves for financial or other causes could also be represented by people who were genuinely concerned. The, one of the lead cases is uh, Bandwa Mukti Morcha, where it was held uh, that Article 32 confers the widest amplitude of power on the Supreme Court to grant relief, and there's no specific indication circumscribing the power. Thus, PILs can be filed by any member of the public acting pro in bona fide for relief in cases where such fundamental rights stand violated. After 132, we come to Article one, uh, 131, which is also part of the original jurisdiction of the court. The court sits uh, to decide suits between two states or between state and center. Uh, often uh, the court, the Supreme Court is the arbiter of disputes that arise within the Union of India, within the Federation of India, and is an inherent part of the federal structure. That if two states have a problem inter se, of a legal nature, or they have a problem with the Union of India, which court can decide? If you'll excuse me for a minute. Now, <coughs> the conditions met, uh, required to be met to invoke the Supreme Court's jurisdiction under Article 131 are that the dispute must be among states and or center. And the dispute must revolve around a question of law or fact of a legal right. It's been invoked recent uh, several times. In recent history, the, the state of Kerala filed a suit against the Union of India challenging the CAA. The states of uh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka have separately come in suits saying that <coughs> money which was due to them under various accounts but had not been paid and have asked for the Supreme Court's intervention. The Supreme Court has, in some cases, made certain directions. I remember uh, Standing Council of Karnataka filing a suit on behalf of the state of Karnataka, where 
or rather defending a suit on behalf of the state of Karnataka where the state of Maharashtra laid claim to uh, the city of Belgaum and other surrounding areas on the ground that they were Marathi speaking. That suit is still pending. <coughs> One of the earlier suits was, uh, uh, which is mentioned here, uh, Karnataka versus Union of India was when the Grover Commission was appointed by the uh, then Janta government to probe into certain acts of the Chief Minister of Karnataka. And there, the court held that Article 131 is a self-contained code on matters falling within its purview and the sole condition for invoking this jurisdiction is that disputes must exist between parties, must involve a question on which the ex existence or extent of a legal right depends. The transfer petitions, and this is uh, an avenue which provides a lot of work to the two advocates on record of the Supreme Court. <coughs> transfer petitions come not only in matrimonial matters, which, which seems uh, to be the most uh, used uh, uh, circumstance in which transfers are sought, but transfers, Article 139A was added to the Constitution by way of the 42nd Constitutional Amendment to avoid multiplicity of litigation. Article 139A1, read with Order uh, 40 of the, court, uh, of the rules, relates to transfer of cases involving the same or substantial questions of law pending before the Supreme Court and one or more high courts or before two or more or high courts. The idea simply being that <coughs> instead of two judgments from uh, two high courts or two or more judgments from two or more high courts, it is better that a question of law, a common question of law uh, uh, pending in various high courts is decided by the Supreme Court itself. This is resorted to more, uh, more by governments and especially the union government, because the uh, legislation, especially union legislation, tends to be a challenge in uh, different uh, courts. And very often, different courts have, have had uh, uh, varying judgments. Article 139A2, read with Art, Order 41, pertains to transfer of case pending before any a high court to another high court. 25 of the CPC and 406 of the CRPC pertain to transfer of a suit or appeal or a case or any other proceeding from a civil criminal court or high court in one state to a civil criminal court or high court in another state. For the exercise of jurisdiction under 25 of the CPC, the only relevant consideration is expediency for the ends of justice. Under 406 CRPC, the revenue the relevant factors for consideration, including reasonable apprehension of miscarriage of justice, likelihood of bias, attitude of public prosecutors. So the uh, Section 25 CPC uh, transfers are uh, mainly these matrimonial matters. Under 406, sometimes uh, cases like uh, the best bakery case uh, during the Gujarat uh, uh, disturbances we, which got transferred to uh, for trial to Bombay and other uh, 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 or the Bilkis Banu case. Uh, that, that's where the Supreme Court has exercised its power to transfer cases. If I can then just one second, please. Then comes election disputes and uh, Election uh, petitions involving disputes to the election of the president or the vice president shall be decided by the Supreme Court. That's under Article 71, one of the Constitution. And uh, uh, it's dealt with in Order for, uh, 46 of the Supreme Court rules. Uh, and the Supreme Court has adjudicated quite uh, quite a few election petitions, including Charan Lal Sahu, 
वर्सेस फकरुद्दीन अली अहमद चरण लाल साहू वर्सेस नीलम संजीव रेड्डी एंड मिस्टर चरण लाल साहू वाज आल्सो एन एडवोकेट ऑन रिकॉर्ड हु हुज चिल्ड्रन स्टिल प्रैक्टिस इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ही ही हैड अ लॉन्ग एंड डिस्टिंग्विश्ड करियर नॉट ओनली एज अ लॉयर बट एज अ फ्रीक्वेंट फाइटर ऑफ इलेक्शंस सो and uh, i must also recollect an instance where in an election dispute where the then president of india uh, vv giri i believe uh, actually uh, he came as a witness uh, uh, when uh, election dispute regarding his election was filed in the supreme court then we have uh, the advisory jurisdiction of the supreme court under article 143 of the constitution which provides for a presidential reference to the supreme court to decide a question of law or fact that has arisen which is of great public importance an advisory opinion of the court has uh, has been held to hold great weight and high persuasive value on all courts in india that's the judgment in the in regard the special courts bill the special courts bill in 1978 was uh, there was a presidential reference to decide on whether special courts could be formed for the trial of uh, excesses during the emergency the supreme court did give its reference but uh, give its answer on the reference but the supreme court is not bound to answer all and every reference uh, for instance uh, in uh, the presidential reference on ayodhya that is shortly after the demolition of the the, the uh, structure uh, in ayodhya of the disputed structure in ayodhya the, the uh, president which is essentially the union government uh, made a reference to the court asking whether it would uh, whether it would uh, come to a, uh, whether it could uh, answer whether any temple had at that point uh, a, 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 a had uh, been at the site of a, of what was the mosque the the court declined to uh, answer that reference saying that it was not necessary it uh, gave its own uh, reasoning as far as the other provisions of the uh, places of worship act and uh, and other enactments with regard to the ayodhya dispute were concerned but uh, uh, i remember a phrase from uh, justice barucha's judgment where he said that ayodhya is a passing storm the honor and dignity of the supreme court cannot be compromised for it well sometimes there are words in a judgment which may then uh, be remembered by few but uh, people who constantly comment on the courts and answers which are sought at any particular point of time if they are not delivered in time sometimes the questions come back to haunt the court sometimes the reverse also happens when the court has answered something and you are not satisfied with the answer governments have tried to resort to article 143 a case in point was the uh 2g judgments after the 2g judgments which said uh, which set aside uh, the allocation of 2g spectrum uh, and uh, cancelled the uh, the contracts the gov- the then government came back with uh, with a reference asking whether uh, any public resources could only be auctioned and could not be dealt with in any other manner and the and the supreme court while answering it made uh, gave certain uh, exceptions which have now formed the basis of the law so the so though uh, an answer to a presidential reference is not stricto sensu a judgment it still has high persuasive value 